Love Tail and the One Piece have been swallowed by a gigantic island whale, one of Laboon's brothers, who took a big chunk out of Jaya where there is now this big hole. That whale has been trapped by the world government at the bottom of the gigantic whirlpool between the three gates of justice and the three most guarded government facilities in the world. <laughs> What gets you to that conclusion is that whales in One Piece always, always appear whenever Love Tail and the One Piece are mentioned. Or to be more precise, I realized that whales guide Luffy and the Straw Hats towards the right direction. This starts as early as Chapter 8, where we see a whale fountain in Orange Town just as Nami acquires the map of the Grand Line from Buggy. And then we already have arguably the most important scene in the entire story, as we meet Laboon at the entrance of said Grand Line. I just love that whale, it's so cute. Now, I personally am convinced that Laboon is the key to figuring out the true nature of Love Tail. First of all, the whale is once again connected to finding the right direction to Love Tail, because it is here where the Straw Hats get the log post from Crocus, who later turns out has been a member of the Roger Pirates himself, who has actually been to Love Tail. Something I still consider to be one of the most underrated reveals in the entire story. Crocus not only explains to the crew how to navigate the Grand Line properly, but more importantly is the first person to actually name drop the final island, Love Tail. What's up, my name is Manu and I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am about this theory today. The more I looked into it, the more it blew my mind. Now, I highly doubt Crocus reveals this info to anyone who just tries to enter the Grand Line. In fact, he only did so after Luffy managed to befriend Laboon and keep him from hitting his head against the Red Line. However, if you've watched any of my other videos, you will know that I don't believe this to be a simple act of kindness as well. I strongly believe that Crocus was placed at the entrance of the Grand Line by his former Captain Roger to wait for the right person to find Love Tail and the One Piece. And not only does Luffy say the exact same things as Roger and is incredibly kind and caring towards Laboon, but he also wears the straw hat that used to belong to Roger, which immediately tells Crocus that this is the man they have been waiting for, the man that has been chosen by Shanks. And that is why he tells Luffy about Love Tail. But we're not done with Laboon yet, because the first thing that happens to the straw hat when entering the Grand Line is getting swallowed by this enormous whale. It's a reference to the classic story trope of Jonah and the Whale that can, for example, also be found in Pinocchio, who also gets swallowed by a whale and then leaves the whale a changed person. Similarly, it's more than fair to say, I think, that the Straw Hats leave Laboon changed as well, now worthy of sailing towards the final islands. Laboon himself is so gigantic that, as you hopefully remember, he actually has an island inside of him from where Crocus tries to take care of him. The first island of the Grand Line, if you want. And so this is where the idea comes from that the last island might be inside a giant whale as well. As far as I can tell, people have made this connection between whales and Love Tail quite early, but this theory in particular stems from my favorite Japanese One Piece YouTuber, Yuderon, whose ideas I already have talked about in two other massive videos. According to Yuderon, and I personally 100% believe that he is spot on with this, Eiichiro Oda, the author of One Piece, writes his story according to three core principles. Symbolism, two sides of the same coin, and word place. The symbol here is of course the whale that represents the journey to Love Tail, but what I want you to focus on is the second concept. Oda likes to take elements and concepts of before the time skip and then reintroduces them after the time skip in an inverted or mirrored way, which I personally find an ingeniously smart way to structure and connect a long format story like One Piece. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
If you want to learn more about this, I suggest you check out my other videos with you that run on this topic. But here's a quick example to illustrate my points. Alabasta and Dressrosa are both arcs about a warlord that rules from the shadow over a country. Both are manipulative, run an underground organization, and have to be exposed and defeated by Luffy. Both times we have a princess that tries to help her country and a king that is unable to actually help their people. The marines are there to interfere, once with Smoka and once with Fujitora, but finally both realize that Luffy is actually helping the people, and much, much more. Well, the argument here is that the first and last island of the Grand Line will also mirror each other. An island inside a giant whale. Not only do we know right from the start that this is actually physically possible, but the person who created the island actually has been to Love Tail himself. So to me at least, it would make a ton of sense if Crocus actually got inspiration for this from the final island itself, don't you think? Then there's the name of Laboon's species. He's literally called an island whale. And honestly, that felt very much like in-your-face writing by Oda-sensei once I started to look at that scene again from this perspective. And we also know that Laboon is still relatively young in island whale years, so there might just very well be even larger relatives of his out there. Now in general, if you love mythology and fantasy as much as I do, you will probably know that tales of gigantuous whales with islands on their back are very common and part of folklore all over the world. So it's not exactly mysterious where Oda Sensei might have gotten the idea from. I actually have even more to say about Laboon, but first let's look at all the other whale symbolism throughout One Piece first. If you look closely, we have small whales engraved in the gates of the palace in Alabasta that is tied closely to the Void Century, one of the ancient weapons, and is right above the hidden Poneglyph. Similarly, there are whales engraved on the giant golden bell in the lost city of Shandora, right there. Not only is the city connected to the ancient kingdom, but according to the big theory by Yuderon, actually was part of the ancient kingdom on Jaya itself. Oh, and doesn't this on top there look a lot like a monkey with a straw hat to you? Just saying. Then we have Whitebeard Ship, the Moby Dick, appearing at Marine Fort as the Emperor declares that the One Piece is real. One Piece wa... We see whales in chapter 604, just before crossing the red line and reaching Fishman Island that is connected to Joy Boy and is home to one of the ancient weapons. And by the way, there are also whales when Robin deciphers the Poneglyph there. Then, after leaving Fishman Island and entering the New World, the Straw Hats are welcomed by a pod of island whales, mirroring the encounter with Laboon and marking their progress towards finding the last island. After that, it takes a while for a whale to appear again, but it finally happens on Zo, where there is this giant whale-shaped tree that contains the first road poneglyph pointing the direction to Love Tail. <laughs> I think it's also worth mentioning at this point that Zunisha herself is connected to the whale theory very closely. I think Oda basically took the classic idea of the whale with an island on its back and turned that into an elephant that is also closely connected to the Void Century. It proves to me that having a giant creature that harbors an entire island is very much possible. Zunisha has been tasked with walking to a certain location as punishment for her sin. So. Could she be looking for a giant whale? Also, I just realized that the road poneglyph is literally inside the giant whale again. Almost too obvious there, Oda-sensei. So as you can see, the whale symbol is closely connected to anything to do with the ancient kingdom and the void century. Alabasta, Shandora, Fishman Island, Zo. The only place left is Wano. But there haven't been any whales in Wano, have there? Well, you might like this one. Take a look at the Kozuki crest. Of course, the main theme here is the crane in the middle. But what do you think about the crossbones around it? To me, they look a lot like whale fins diving into the ocean. Very hard to unsee, am I right? Now, this might just be a way for Oda to connect all these places. 
but I think it's actually quite possible that the whale itself was the symbol of the ancient kingdom. I mean, the chapter itself is titled Inside the Whale. But let's get back to the giant whale that holds Love Tale. That rhymes. Because there is a lot more evidence that there is a twin whale to Laboon, another whale just like him that has also eaten an entire island. Well, first of all, the place where Laboon was introduced is called Twin Capes. Then we have the giant kraken Sudome who lives at the bottom of the ocean and who has a brother that was held hostage by Hody and thus forced him to comply. <laughs> Could this hint at Laboon's relative being held hostage by the world government? If you remember, we also get this really interesting line by the Sea Kings. But the most important chapter after the encounter with Laboon is 654, where the Straw Hats finally arrive in the New World. The chapter starts with Luffy catching a fish that is then swallowed by another fish, swallowed by an even larger fish. The chapter itself is titled A Pod of Whales and on the cover features the twins Moss and Kiwi from Water 7, the Risky Brothers, as well as Lola who we now know also has a twin sister with Chiffon. Oh, and the chapter also features an enormous whirlpool that transports the straw hats right to a huge pod of island whales. And this is where things really get interesting, as you can see, because I can't stop grinning like an idiot when thinking about it. In this same chapter, we get reminded that Laboon is closely tied to one of the Straw Hats in particular, Brooke, the musician of the crew who had this tear-jerking flashback with the whale. Laboon! <laughs> Now in this chapter, Brooke of course mistakes one of the whales for Laboon and starts singing the song that always made Laboon happy when he heard it. Bing Sake. And to my absolute astonishment, now that I'm reading all of this again, the other island whales recognize this song and actually start singing as well, which is why they start carrying the sunny safely to the surface. <laughs> Now, in case you don't know why this is so important, Bing Sake is heavily connected to Love Tale as well. The song literally ends with the phrase never ending, ever wandering, our funny traveling tale, using the Japanese kanji for love and tale. I actually made an entire video analyzing the song that contains hints about the Kozuki, the dawn of the world, and much, much more. Now, I personally came to the conclusion back in that video that Love Tale might be the underworld, where the crew would have to descend to. But now I actually believe that the underworld is the bottom of the ocean. Davy Jones' locker, the inside of a giant island whale to which the crew will have to descend. The ever-wandering love tale. That sounds a lot like a moving, living thing, similar to Zunisha. As you know from Luffy, Ace and Sabo, sake is a sign of brotherhood. So delivering Bing sake to one of Laboon's brothers might be the promise that Joy Boy made to the mermaid princess and that he could never keep. There are also other lines in that song that would fit well to Love Tale being underwater. For example, if you lose your nerve, this breath could be your last, but if you just hold on, the morning sun will rise. Holding your breath to go underwater? Then there's also Tsumugi no Sato yo. Tsumugi no Sato is the village of spinning. I originally thought that this refers to the Kozuki spinning the history into the poneglyphs, which is also supported by the line, the birds sing as they draw circles in the sky. So to me, that was probably the Kozuki crest. But if Yudeon's idea is true, that the whale is trapped in a giant whirlpool between the gates of justice, the spinning village could literally be Love Tail caught in a giant whirlpool, ever moving. Now before I tell you another crazy detail, if you enjoy this type of content, the secret to getting more of it every single week is subscribing to the channel. Another crazy detail I found is that there is actually a whale yokai in Japanese mythology called Bakekujira, a giant living whale skeleton. Now, being sake ends with, doesn't matter who you are, someday you'll just be bones, never ending, ever wondering, how funny, blah blah blah. 
and we literally have Brook, a living skeleton that is connected to the island whales. Honestly, I'm not sure if that's the actual direction Oda would want to take this, but it might be relevant as well. And so the overall idea is that a giant whale 800 years ago bit off Love Tail from Jaya to protect whatever was there, but then was trapped by Emu and the world government between three gates of justice at the bottom of the sea from where it can now not escape. Which might also be the reason why Shanks and his men all haven't eaten devil fruits so they can go and visit. After all, Shanks would well know how to get to Love Tale, even if he did stay behind with Buggy. <laughs> Now, as fascinating as this theory is, if you really want to blow your mind and take it all to the next level, this isn't enough on its own. There's actually an absolutely crazy theory about the true nature of Love Tale and the Ancient Kingdom that has completely changed how people see One Piece forever. And that's why you really shouldn't ignore this video because it's twice as exciting as the whale theory and in combination with it will make you feel like you figured out One Piece.